Happy Wednesday to you all. I can't thank you enough for choosing to listen to our podcast today of the sea of options you clearly have. Uh, I'm your host, Nick, uh, and I am joined by Chrissy, my producer, who is in scorching hot Montana. (laughs) How warm is it there today? It's minus 14. Amanda, part of the syndicate, the social syndicate, is with us as well. Allie is slacking. I know she's going to get really. I mean, that Allie, she's such a slacker. She's going to get, she get it together. About that. Yeah. Uh, thank God for Amanda. What yeah. Did we do. Thank God, Amanda. Thank God. Poor Allie. in the studio as well. Chris Medina is with us to talk about psychics in mediums. I forgot yeah. to even mention to Chris. Uh, I don't know if I've told this story before. Maybe I did on on my Patreon. That's still available if you're interested in uh, what happened when I was The Bachelor. Ooh, but uh, that segue. That was impressive. I'll never forget uh, while filming one of the young ladies who I, I sent home on a date uh, before I sent her home, knowing I was going to send her home, but waiting for her, you know, waiting for the right time, I guess you could say told me that before she came on the show that uh, she sat down and uh, spoke with a, a median. And if you're saying, no, Nick, you mean a medium? I'm, I'm saying, no, she said median. And I was confused at the time because I was like, what do you mean a, a street signal told you that you were going to find love on the show? And I did this whole interview about like how I was pretty sure she meant medium, but met, said median. And then they didn't air that because, you know, and did that medium tell her she was going to be with Nick for the rest of her life? Well, it, I think it did tell her that she was going to find love in the next couple months, I think is what she told me. Um, no, not with you. And then I said, can I walk you out? <laughs> but uh, I got to say, uh, uh, Chris was great, is great, really enjoyed the conversation with him. Uh, we have thought about having uh mediums and psychics on this podcast before i am a skeptic not a true believer chris he is i've always wanted to have a conversation with a psychic uh, about just their practice uh, and I, I was i always wanted to be up front with them about that i wanted to just ask some questions you know i am a, uh, a skeptic but open to learning chris was the only one who has ever said yes yeah. And so props to Chris. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. I had a ton of fun with him, uh, a really delightful person. And uh, I think you will find this episode to be a lot of fun, regardless of what you, uh, what your thoughts and opinions are about the psychic and, and medium world. So uh, uh, we can't thank Chris enough for being so gracious with his time and, and uh, having this conversation. Uh, don't forget to send in your questions at asknick at castme.com, cast with a K for our Ask Nick episodes. We need your stories to continue to have our nas- Ask Nicks. Um, so regardless of what's going on in your life, uh, if you have a question, a problem, an issue, um, regardless of what that issue might be, we'd love for you to share your story. You can be anonymous if you want. Uh, 100% of the people who have come on our show uh, are, are glad they have done it, uh, whether they found it entertaining or helpful. Either way, it's been a lot of fun. So don't forget to send in those questions. And uh, there's merch. We always we've been updating new merch every week. Um, Biofiles.com for your hoodies, t-shirts, coffee mugs, breakup books. You name it, we have it. Well, that's not true, but we have some good stuff. Uh, <laughs> and if there is nothing else, let's get to Chris Medina. Chris, so, thanks, so, thanks so much for coming. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm really excited to have you. We've um, discussed, Chris and I, about having a, a psychic or, or, or a medium if, as if a, an, a, on the show. And we both, for our own personal interests, thought it would be a great topic to have. Chrissy, because she's a big fan of it, a true believer, as they say. <laughs> Myself, I'm more of a skeptic. You don't um, say. And I often like having conversations with people about topics that I either don't understand or, or, or 
I'm a skeptic. For example, like we had Ricky Williams on a couple weeks ago who was really big into astrology. Yeah, mm-hmm. And yep. up until the time I had spoken with Ricky Williams, I was like, eh, astrology, Cosmo magazine. It's fun. It's neat. I know a little bit about it. Talking to him. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. I've learned so much more on how it could be useful and and why people who are who really study it, it can add value into understanding ourselves and relationships. And that was really interesting. We've had other mediums and psychics reach out to the show and ask to come on to be guests. And we're very upfront is like, hey, I'm a skeptic. Are you open to having a conversation about that and then have a discussion? And quickly, we're just like, nope, we don't want to come nope. on. Oh, we're not. Gosh, yeah. and it's just like, well. Now I'm even more of a skeptic. Now you are. <laughs> what are you hiding? Fuck, yeah. You're a fucking like, let me look under the hood, bro. If you're trying to sell me a car, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, yeah. You, I want you to buy this thing. I want, you know, but like, no, 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 no. Like, yeah. well, I will send you pictures, you know, I, just take my word for it. It's a really good car. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. yeah. But I want you to buy it. So but I no s- conversation about it whatsoever. No, no we can't discuss None. it. Um, so can't I just want to say. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you for having for, me. For coming on, uh, knowing that... I'm going to get grilled like a steak? Not grilled. That's the <laughs> thing. I, I'm not... I just want to say, like, I, I I, am a bit of a skeptic about it. And uh, and I also willing to acknowledge there's just a lot I don't understand. My skepticism comes from a place of ignorance or not understanding. And mm-hmm. also, it does sound a little fishy. Believe it or not. <laughs> I No, seriously. I'm a skeptic, too. Yeah. When I came into doing this, I've always been a psychic my entire life. And uh, did not start doing this for a profession until about 2014. And when I came out to do it, I was like, I'm going to change the way the world looks at spirituality, metaphysical stuff, psychics, mediums. It's, it's corny. You know what I'm saying? Like you got people <laughs> chasing fucking ghosts around a cemetery, screaming at them, yelling at them. You know, uh, how many fucking times can you ask somebody or tell somebody that's over the age of like 30? I'm picking up a dead grandfather. <laughs> or this type of spirit, this type of energy. And first of all, why the fuck would these ghosts come to you in the first place? They have I nothing to do with you. Yeah. So when I see these on the show, like I've had ghosts. Uh, do, you want, do you want me to go into this? Yeah, I, I, please. Just, just to satisfy your curiosity here. I've had ghosts that were racist in their, in their lives before they passed away. Be the same shitty way they were. They are after death. Like this woman came to me and her father had passed away and she had all this drama. I always tell the story, had all this drama with her family. Where's the money at? Where's this? Where's that? The father came through and was, you have to understand something. When I open that side up, everybody wants to come through. So I'm sitting there and I'm listening to the, I'm giving the woman the reading. I'm telling her what's going on. I'm also picking up on all these different spirits, ghosts, if you will, Mm -hmm. coming through. And I hear this one guy come through loud and clear and be like, I can't believe that I'm sitting here having to talk to a fucking F. The, the the sure the word for gay and i was like what and he was like yeah i can't believe i'm sitting here talking to an effing you know i tell her to mind her own business that it's done it's over with and i asked the woman i was like i have to ask you something i said i'm not trying to be disrespectful or rude i said but was your father a miserable fuck before he died <laughs> and she was like yeah i was like well what do you mean i said was he like racist and like just horrible attitude and she's like yeah 100 and i said he's he's here i said let's wrap this up and get him the fuck out of my house <laughs> yeah okay i know <laughs> Never a bad time to learn. That's a true statement. But it's e- sometimes it's an even better time. And when you're sitting at home and nothing to do and you've run out of things to watch on Netflix, go ahead and take a master class. Because truly there is something out there for everyone, whether you want to learn how to sleep better, train your dog, uh, write a book, uh, make a movie, write music, sing, cook. Uh, the list goes on. And, and the people who are teaching these classes are cl- truly world-renowned. You have Alicia Keys on there. You have um, Martin Scorsese on there. You have Gordon Ramsay. Truly experts in their field. Uh, I signed up for Masterclass long before they became a, a sponsor of this show. It makes a great gift. It, it's so well done. It truly is helpful. Be a master. Take a class with Masterclass. <laughs> I highly recommend you check it out. Get unlimited access to every Masterclass available to you. And for, for Vile File listeners, you get 15% off an annual membership. Go to masterclass.com slash V. I A L L. That's masterclass.com slash V I A L L for 15% off masterclass. Ship station. Hey, for all the people who are working from home, running a business, uh, and they uh, rely on effective shipping, Ship Station is the app for you. I use Ship Station every day with natural habits. It's what my business runs on. You can ship from USPS, FedEx, UPS, 
Easily compare carriers and choose the best solutions every day. With, with ShipStation, now small businesses can access the same rates usually reserved for the Fortune 500 companies without the contracts or commitments. It's no wonder ShipStation has more than five-star reviews than any other shipping software, and no wonder why Natural Habits uses it every day. Use my offer code VIALL to get a 60-day free trial. That's two months free. No hassle, stress-free shipping. Just go to ShipStation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page, and type in V-I-A-L-L. That's ShipStation.com. Enter offer code V-I-A-L-L. Make ship happen. What, 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 off, for off the bat, what's the difference? Is there one between a medium and a psychic? For sure. What the, is that? The mediums, the medium side of stuff is more of like talking to ghosts and spirits. And I find that to be hokey. I never, ad I advertise the medium side of stuff, but I don't want to be known for the medium stuff. And the psychic. So when you say that's hokey, I, I, again, what do you mean? Because you just told a story about a racist ghost. Just what we see on TV. It's not, again, my, my readings are completely different than what I see on television. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? It's more, it's more about, um, believe it or not, these people don't want to come through. They don't want to be speaking to their to their relatives. They want these people to to move on mm -hmm. and like let go. Gotcha. So it's not like what you see on TV. Like I'm trapped here. I can't go because of this. They're more like, do you have any idea what it's like on the other side? Like when you leave your body, like it's done. You're no longer Nick. All your problems, all the shit that you had with those women on television, it's all done and it's all over with. So you said you you weren't and you weren't a psychic before 2000. I've always been a psychic. You've always I, been a psychic. I've always been a psychic. Never did this for a profession until 2014. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. Uh -huh. When does was one realize they're a psychic? As a little boy. Okay. Yeah. And what was that like? Um, I remember my dad. Um, my dad is Native American. He's Apache Indian. And so, so is the rest of his family. And they all have the ability in some sort of way. And I grew up with my dad. We lived in Palmdale. He's a biker. And we get stoned all the time. And my dad has an amazing sense of humor to where he likes to trip people out. So here I am, like at the age of three and four, three or four, going into the room that they smoke weed in and giving his friends readings and then making them cry. I remember making one guy cry so bad that I thought I did something wrong. And then my dad would just hit me up and ask me, what do you get off of this person? What are you picking up from this person? What are you seeing? And then I would just tell him. Hmm. And it's not like it, it, it's when people ask about it, it's not like, um, I'm I don't know if you want to call it channeling. It's 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 just it, I don't know how else to explain it other than it's just images and words that I hear. But it's not like a female or male. I don't know how to explain. It. It's not a female or male type of voice. It's just the insight that comes through. It's a, like a, a, a sense mm -hmm. or a, yeah. a gut feeling, I guess. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that like you said hokey. There's probably can you tell from the people who claim to be psychics or mediums that they're full of shit if they are. I mean, well, I assume if 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 this is a legit thing and there's people who really have this ability, there's probably a lot more people who pretend to have it and, and leverage. Because I think the, a lot of the people who are skeptics and cautious is that kind of sometimes where I have a problem with religion, you know, for me. And I grew up in a very religious household and I'm a faith-based person and, and believe in God, but you sometimes see people use religion as a weapon or weaponize God and play on people's vulnerabilities, you know, I'm, you know, monetize and, and benefit from. Yeah. And you could see that same criticism with psychics and mediums, people who, like you say, are longing to connect with uh, someone who passed away. Or people are constantly looking for closure mm -hmm. in, you know, in all aspects of life. And certainly um, with death, it's hard to get closure. How do you, what, what could people look for, for, for someone who, uh, might be full of shit who might not be like, you know, it's like the, the vulnerable person out there who wants to seek out someone who, you know, has your abilities, but how can they steer away from someone who might be a crook? I mean, that's hard because um, I'm just going to shit on it a little bit here. I've worked those, those events, like the conscious life expos, those psychic events and stuff like that. And about 95% of these people are full of shit. I mean, they're just That's scary, uh, yeah. seriously. And what, what ends up happening is that the person is so, like you said, they're so vulnerable. They want to know about what's going to happen, how this is going to come into play, you know, just, just to have that, that comfort or that, you know, that, that peace of mind that they'll end up giving the person that's reading them all the information up front. And that's all the person needs mm -hmm. to steer them in that direction of like, you know, belief or, or, or taking down that road of illusion. Does that make sense? Sure, yeah. So when I come in, when I do my readings, I don't tell, when I, people ask me like, you know, what, what should I expect or what should I do during a psychic reading? If the person's fucking psychic, 
give them your name. That's it. Sure. Let them work for it. So when it comes to my readings, I don't. T- I tell people just give me your name. That's it, and send a picture. But don't tell me anything else about you for the first five to six of the five to six minutes of the reading. I'm gonna go in and give you what I'm getting directly, and sure. then I'll open it up for questions. Yeah. Because if you start having them ask questions or they start saying shit, they're they're pretty much giving themselves their own reading. Uh, yeah, because that's sometimes how it seems like. It's like, well, did you know someone who wore a shirt at uh-huh. some point? It was like, yes. Green? Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. I did. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You're like, oh my God. <laughs> was that shirt white? Was it, uh, it yeah. was. Exactly. Was it made of cotton? Exactly. Did they sometimes like get crazy and wear polyester? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, spice things up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did they eat lunch on Wednesdays? Um, I'm sorry. They were the kind of people that ate food, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so you almost kind of have to earn their trust in a way. 100. The people whose readings you're giving. Do you yeah. sometimes ask people to, to not speak? I tell them all the time. Okay. I say, stop, 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 stop. And I cut them off. I'm known for that during my readings. Do you have any names out in the public that you're not necessarily a fan of who you would advise to stay away from? I'm, it's totally a loaded question. You don't have to answer it. It's totally it. a loaded question. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw the people under the bus that we were talking about before and just leave it at that. Okay. You know what I'm okay. talking about, Chrissy? Yeah. I know who you're I, talking about. Do they draw? Do, they draw? do you draw? No. No, you know the, the they no, may they may draw they may draw, they may draw squiggly yeah. lines and maybe yeah. we'll edit that yeah. <laughs> why i have no loyalty to people who don't want to come on the show and and exactly fuck questions. them no, i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> i feel like starting a fight in the uh, medium community today <laughs> I'll, I'll win for sure yeah no i'm just kidding <laughs> but that like but that is the thing like that is the thing right it's like okay cool let's have this conversation but when you are so like my reaction to that was like when you're so not wanting to have that conversation then like there's there's a problem yeah like there's something not right exactly yeah and that's how i feel about it you know like i have nothing to hide my i have my own podcast my my life is an open book i've done some really shady shit that i'm not proud of but i want people to know about it i want to put it yeah. out there i'm a human being behind the whole psychic shit you know I love a good varietal i certainly do varietals are the best i love varietals that especially that are Women owned. My audience, all women. Love it. I wouldn't know what I'd do with all you women. And I love supporting the people who support me. And female founded businesses. Let's let's go ahead and support those. And I'm talking about Bev. That's right. Bev is a female first canned wine brand that was founded to change not only the way the product is consumed, but the way an industry and culture has operated for generations in an industry that is almost exclusively masculine bev is breaking norms and creating something from the female perspective that is approachable fun and consumer centric they have five varietals rosé sauvignon blanc pinot gris pinot noir as well as a limited edition extra fizzy sparkling white wine my favorite the pinot noir because you know i like my reds uh, their wines are dry, crisp, and a little fizzy, super refreshing, and most of all, delicious. They have zero sugar and only three carbs and 100 calories per serving. Perfect for your New Year's goals of cutting back on sugar, but still having a ton of fun. Bev it makes it easy to have a glass of wine and not overindulge. Also, for all you single-serving people out there and don't want to crack open a whole bottle of wine and feel wasteful, and they want to make sure all the wine they drink is fresh, Bev is the perfect solution for that. We've worked out an exclusive deal with the Vile Files podcast listeners. Receive 20% off your first purchase plus free shipping on all orders. I suggest you try the best-selling Ladies' Night Variety Pack so you can check out all the delicious varietals. Go to drinkbev.com slash V-I-A-L-L and use code V-I-A-L-L at checkout to claim this deal. That's D-R-I-N-K-B-E-V dot com slash V-I-A-L-L. Speaking of natural habits... That's right. Make sure that the air you breathe inside your home is safe and smells good. And also, at the same time, if you can kill two birds with one stone, you can maybe help with some of those headaches that you're getting or help you relax at night. And I'm talking about Natural Habits Essential Oils, USDA Organic Essential Oils. Uh, we specialize in blends, so and when you combine certain essential oils, they have even better effects uh, on your body. Chrissy, one of our best customers... I don't know what I would do without it every day. I literally don't know. Uh, our, our center blend that helps with headaches. You can roll on essential oils on your body. You can put them in a diffuser. You can use them in a bath. Uh, we uh, offer both options. Go to nhoils.com, N-H-O-I-L-S.com. Use code Chrissy for 25% off free shipping, nhoils.com. 
Code Chrissy. So you can tell the future. Yes. What does that mean? Did you know that the Packers were going to have a devastating loss in the <laughs> NFC Championship I am gay. game? Like I don't give a shit about no, the I, Packers. I'm just. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. What does that mean? Like if I if if we were friends uh-huh. like three weeks ago, could I have been like just to save me the stress? Just fucking tell me how this day is going to go. Yeah, I think go. so. Yeah. But that that's a hard thing though, and this is not a cop out. I hate giving readings to where I'm giving a futuristic reading. Because that, that's such a tricky thing. Because if you're if you're dealing with somebody that is um, a little bit more behind the scenes or doesn't have like the uh, the voice or the energy or just like that the confidence and determination to get up and do shit, how can I predict a, fr- a fruitful future for you? Does that make sense? Like if you're yeah. constantly in your own way, how are things going to change? What's going to set you apart from the person that's actually putting the time and effort in? It's not relying on a psychic. So I mean that that's interesting because does the, does predicting the future it's more potential outcomes I guess the, you know then the next question is like like are you good at stock trading you know kind of you I know wish. like how's that work with the ability I to wish. predict the future I'm gonna I'm gonna do the psychic cop out here there it's it's not to be used for personal gain There's so many times that I wanted to get insight especially when it comes to like dating and shit like that you know give me give me this and they're like you know you have to wait in line like everybody else. And I know that sounds so to you. I know it sounds like a cop out, but it's true. I'd be a fucking billionaire right now. It's a harder answer. That's what. To that, well, that's why I'm going around through the back door, yeah. doing this that way. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well done. Yeah. So yeah, I guess I'm still curious about being able to tell the future. Is it just more? Because you're right. Like I've always said, like I I hate it when people say things like, "Well, if it's meant to be, it'll happen," or you know, uh, "There's a plan for everything," and I'm just like. Uh, is there? I mean, I, I believe that if you're willing to learn from mistakes, uh, you can things will have a way of working out, you know, mm-hmm. short of death and taxes. Mm-hmm. You know, if you are open to listening to your past, observing your mistakes and the people around you, you can create better outcomes from yourself. And 100%. if you uh, are unwilling to learn, you can't sometimes shitty things happen to good people mm-hmm. and you can even learn from that. That's just how I believe. I, I don't think that. Um, you know, they'll say God has a plan. I'm just like, I, I believe in God. I also believe in um, uh, free will. And and if there's free will, I'm thinking, well, then it's, I don't know if it's God's plan, but I definitely could do something to fuck up my day tomorrow and I can make a mistake and I can hopefully learn from it or I cannot. And, and I'm so thankful for that ability to make my choices. That's what makes you a human. Um, and and so like how does that work with being a psychic and the ability to tell the future? Is it more like you know if you do X Y and Z this will happen, or if you do X Y and Z that will happen? What is that like? I give them both. I I give them both. I'll, I'll predict what's going on with them and tell them like like I'll give them insight about who they are to their core, the things that are holding them back, and telling them you can you know if you if you choose to do it this way, you're going to get the same results. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. like I like I don't I, I leave the power. I think what psychics and mediums do is that they want the recognition. They want the fame they want the clout for it i'm not looking for that shit what i'm looking for you is to get to get out of your way so you can get out of my way does that make sense like open up your fucking eyes so you can see what's going on and not i have another just really fast here i have an issue with the whole love and light community the what love and light community i'm uh, totally unfamiliar with that it's what you were just saying about you know i'm gonna leave it in the hands of the universe that's just something that you say when you disappoint yourself that's yeah it's a way to make yourself feel better about the shitty things that either you did or sometimes that things that you have no control over exactly and so those when, are the harder pills to swallow exactly so when they tell me you know i'm going to leave it to the universe or if spirit wants me to do it i'm going to leave it have you ever th- have you ever heard of get the fuck up and do something you know what i'm saying like like what what you're you're that's what's wrong with you is that you're leaving your power in the hands of other people you're you're uh dismissing accountability and responsibility for your own life and hoping that someone's going to come in here and fix it for you there's a lot of people in your community who kind of lead with that oh yeah 100 yeah, I tell people I won't read you more than two or three times because then that the, then what ends up happening is you become codependent on me. And the last thing I need is more kids. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So you have a three reading limit mm-hmm. for the same for the same thing. I like that. Because I'm not your therapist. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Yeah. yeah I mean, because re- <laughs> I would assume, you know, like uh, uh, the uh, profitable medium or psychic would be like, well, you know how like a therapist is like, well, we're out of time. I'll see you right when we get to the good yeah. stuff. And. Well, I guess we'll have to do that no, next I, time. I charge, I charge an, a, 
a good amount for a half hour session and an hour long session. You could ask every one of my clients. I never go, I'm, I'm not a clock watcher. I'm not like somebody at the 30 minute mark be like, okay, we're done. I want, I want to get you out of your own way. I don't want you coming back to me. I want you to tell me, I want you to tell your friends about me, but I want, I, I want the, the session to speak for itself. What else can you tell us and educate us about being a psychic in a medium? That it's not what you see on television. I mean, it. Uh, I'm gonna say a good majority of that shit is all, you know, it's it's all for points. It's all for, uh, you know, making things more interesting. But uh, I'm a psychic. I mean, I've always been this way. I lead a very normal life. I have two kids. You know, oh, I, you know, awesome. worked in the insurance company for insurance industry for almost 20 years. That I'm normal. That I just have an ability. You worked in insurance. Yeah, that's kind of ironic. And I did. I did. Uh, Were long... you able to be like, hey, you're really gonna need this? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Yeah, uh, actually, actually, you might yeah. want to get the umbrella policy, buddy. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. Full liability, honey. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it was long term care insurance where people were where you set these things up and they, they, the, the term is, oh, you handle this client from the cradle to the grave. And so you're, you're dealing with people that are dying on a constant basis. It says here that you correctly predicted uh, uh, Stasi Schrader's relationship with her fiance. Mm -hmm. uh, did you did you give her a warning that she might not want to say insensitive shit on a podcast i did that on her show yeah <laughs> it's like hey you sometimes say things yeah stassi anyway. but she's a good stassi. girl though i i i i'm not gonna shit talk her i think she's a, i think she's a good girl I, I, I i met her she was nothing but kind to me when i did so yeah where do you want to go from here on this i, I mean i i sometimes I, I don't know how many more questions without sounding like i'm um being difficult do you give readings on podcasts or like are where are, where do we like what can you tell me about me i don't know like you don't have to but i'm also kind of curious i've been thankful that i haven't experienced tr true loss in my life mm -hmm. um I, I have some relatives that passed away everything that everything about you is internal what does that mean that everything that goes on with you is has to do with your way of thinking and it's not necessarily a bad thing i think that sometimes that you I feel like with you, you end up getting caught up in what's, ex uh, this. please don't think I'm calling you a follower or, sh or shit talking in any way. Yeah. Sometimes I think you get caught up in what's expected of you sometimes that you can't, that, that you can't separate what's really going on versus what's been going on. Does that make sense? But, you're talking specifically uh -huh. about me. Uh, specifically about you. Gotcha. Say that again. That you're, that you internalize more, that, that, that you're more internal. All, all your issues are internal here. So with, when it comes to your way of thinking, I think that sometimes, again, that you do some, you do what's, you've been doing what's expected of you, not following or being like, you know, oh, is this going to make you happy here? But you just kind of been going down the same path here with, without really taking some time to really see where, where you're at in your, in your path. Does that make sense? What's, what's personal to you? What means the most to you? I don't know if I agree or disagree with that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I am someone who is an overthinker. Everyone knows this about me. If you listen to my show, mm -hmm. if you've hung out with me for 15 minutes, you know mm -hmm. I'm an overthinker. That's why I said all your all your stuff is internal. So when it comes to the over again, I don't want to add. Well, I believe stuff. the you know the, the my stuff is all internal. I, I in terms of doing other things, like sometimes I get frustrated because I refuse to do that. I uh, in in terms of if I don't believe it's right, if I don't believe. Despite what people might say, I won't do it or I will do it, depending mm -hmm. on, on what that is. Now, that being said, sometimes I might anticipate criticism for something I'm doing or not doing. Or I might, you know, like the, or the perception of what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Makes perfect like, sense. Like, you know, I'm doing X, Y, and Z. I'm good with it. But I don't know what people are going to say. Do I think about that? Fuck yes. Uh, who doesn't? Well, he fails to realize sometimes that you're in this space already. You're, you know already, you're already got a seat at the table. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like you're here, you've earned your spot. So I feel like with you, um, the, the, the creative bug is going to get more intense over, I'm going to say over the rest of this year, as far as like new ideas, getting involved in new business ventures here, but making sure that you're not, here's the thing with you and tell me if this is wrong. You, you can challenge me. No, this is too. fun. Yeah. Um, the only thing with you again, is that overthinking and holding yourself back. Not, not out of fear, like, you know, what are people going to think of it? But sometimes I think that you have all these great ideas and they're a little bit on the, I'm, I'm not going to say the whimsical side of things or the feminine side of things. And I think that sometimes you're not, you don't allow yourself the opportunity to be as free flowing as you possibly can be. Well, I've really have been busting out some great wig content in the past couple of weeks. And wig. have <laughs> you seen it? And I'll like, you know, I'll joke with Amanda, one of my uh, uh, social media uh people that we come up with ideas or a brainstorm there are a couple of times i'm like all right we've got a couple of wigs let's let's get away from the wigs is that what you're speaking to or 
No, not yeah. like dressing up. I mean, you've done more drag than I have, but. Uh, I, <laughs> Listen, I bought a few wigs a couple years ago. I figured I might as well get a return on my investment. My audience seems to enjoy it. I, I don't find it emasculating or anything. It's, no, it's, a, no, it's all, no. all fun. But uh, mm -hmm. I will like sometimes. I mean, do you write? Well, I'm writing a book right now. Uh, I'm not I don't write and I don't I'm not good at it and it what? doesn't come naturally. Are you really? Is it that it doesn't come naturally? Yeah, I find that hard to believe. My overthinking has a way of not getting it's a coffee table book for for uh, questions with Nick on my Instagram and mm -hmm. but I'm trying to write around those thoughts if I write you something and it, there might be some nuggets of good ideas in there mm -hmm. it's also a hard read I mean thank God for my editor because I don't know where a fucking comma goes to save my life and you know run on sentences are my friend and mm -hmm. like I don't you know, I mean, spelling, please. I don't know. Sometimes like, you know, word word check is kind of like I have no fucking clue what you're trying to spell here. But uh, I think he I downplays write? himself. I, th I think that you downplay yourself. No, Again, those are you're, all you're gonna, true you're statements. Do that. <laughs> it, it is. But you're, but but it, it may be. But I think he's the man doing is the, like, I've seen his text. Well, come on. I, <laughs> I think that I think he's doing the love and light thing. I think that he's cushioning the blow to just make himself feel better. But I think there's more there's more to you inside than you that you let on and that again we'll, we'll, we'll get we'll get to predictions later but i what really do you, what do you mean by that because i'm willing to like i'm willing to have you tell me i'm more awesome than i realize like don't get me wrong uh -oh. <laughs> i'm open to that narrative yeah. no but i'm kidding and i've said this before uh i said this on my friend's podcast and i've talked to my therapist about this that it i'm uh, my i'm more comfortable uh criticizing myself in preparation for outside criticism i'm i'm i i there's a desire for me to be self-aware um knowing that that can be challenging at times and as a result i i want to make sure that i'm aware of potential criticism that can come my way is as, as a way because nothing bothers me more internally than being called out for something that i didn't realize before they did mm -hmm. like a justifiable criticism or it's just like, oh, fuck. You yeah. suffer from what most people suffer from is that your intuition collides with your everyday way of thinking. I think that you're very perceptive and you're very much, uh, you can be a, a very much a no bullshit type of person, but I don't think that that's your approach right off the bat. I think you kind of let people do what they're going to do and then kind of like, and then and then jump in at that point. Yeah. But I think what ends up happening with you is that you put on these layers and extension with your way of thinking that take you further out than you need to be. Instead of just kind of like doing it in the moment or kind of like, you know, putting one foot in front of the other and just see where it goes. You're trying to you're trying to make sure that every step that you take is going to ensure your weight. Sure. And that's yeah. too fucking stressful. That, I mean, you, how, how's your digestion? Well, you know, I think, OK. Like, am I pooping? Yeah. Like, do you have issues going to the bathroom? Like, are you? <laughs> I mean, if you'd ask my sister Maria, she'd probably say yes. But I feel like I'm OK with it because you carry a lot of the energy. The, God, it's so I'm, I'm I grind my I'm constantly i'm a high anxiety person don't tell me anything yeah don't yeah. Oh, i'm sorry yeah, i don't yeah, know yeah, yeah. Like, no. <laughs> this is all not like not news like if you've done your homework uh, like, you know but that's um, just the thing i yeah. don't again i'm not not to shit yeah. on you but i don't i don't know you know i don't watch believe it or not, i don't want for being gay i don't watch the bachelor you know i just heard that you know when they reach out and they were like you know oh you know you want to be on his show i was like yeah for sure and they told us well wait a minute is he skeptical and they're like yeah I was like, this is going to be fun, but that's it. That's all that I know. So right. when it comes to you and when I talk about internalizing stuff and all the energy that you store is all internal, that's enough to knock your body out of whack. Oh yeah, totally. I'm, so what do you I'm do to release? I work out, masturbate a ton. I'm just kidding. For sure. But do you, but are you actually letting go of what's been holding you back or the, I, I don't want to be all, you know, psychic here, but do, do, do you actually let go and come to terms with what with I, I have an extraordinarily hard time letting go. I'm that's a dweller. I get that from my mom. You need, you, that's the one thing that's going to get in your way, and that that's what's going to age you faster than anything else. Well, that I believe. But you, I, I, I again, I'm not trying to kiss. But your I do ass. age gracefully. So. You sure do. Yeah. Sh yeah. But so. God, can you imagine if I wasn't a warrior, what I'd look like? Uh -huh. uh, but yeah, I do. I do. I hold on to things. I, I, as I've gotten older, I've become more aware of that, and so I try. Have you become more aware of it, or better at playing the game? What do you mean? Have you become more aware of what your issues are or better at hiding them or manipulating the game into your favor? No, I truly, I mean, th therapy for me has really helped that. I think the core thing I've worked on with my therapist is getting out of my own way. Mm -hmm. uh, if there is something in my world that is bothering me, 
to try to address it and do something with it, but let it go and, and not obsess over it, fixate over it for the next you know, 24 or 48 hours like I would in the past or mm-hmm. maybe weeks. Fuck. And then kind of just process my anxiety mm-hmm. um, and, you know, kind of control what you can control and try to let it go. Have I gotten better? Yes. And my it, it will always be a struggle for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I do think through my th- my ther- th- working with my therapist, I've gotten better at just having those like, you know, breathing, you know, focusing on my breathing, acknowledging that I, I can't do anything about this and then let it go. Um, sometimes I'm better at it than others. Other times I just like I'm in a rabbit hole. You know, mm-hmm. I will I won't take my own advice that, mm-hmm. you know, like I will sometimes give my friends or peers of like, well, you can you can. You can go on Instagram and Twitter and obsessively read about yourself and and look for the criticism Mm -hmm. or you could just ignore it and and not make it feel bigger than it is in reality because that's what social media is going to do. But fuck, sometimes I like I'll 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 have what almost feels like an out of body experience Mm -hmm. where I'll be like, I know I'm fucking doing this and I don't know why I'm not going to stop, but I'm just I'm going to keep fuck it. I'm going to keep going. You know, I do that That's all like the time. That's like the worst thing, though. Yeah. But yeah, like I said, I, I have nothing negative to give you when it comes to predicting your future or what I see for you. The only one thing here is, again, as things start to get busier, busier throughout the rest of this year and things start to open back up and more opportunity comes into play for you because you're not done growing. I mean, right. as far as far as like when it, when it comes to your career, I don't know what you have planned for yourself. What's up with these hosting gigs? What about them? Do you have any hosting gigs that are coming up? I do. Yeah. 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 You got all these things that are going to, uh, again, I know it's so cliche to say that, you know, the next Andy Cohen or Ryan Seacrest and shit like that. But, but agents would love to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> but the only thing that's going to get in your way is you and your way of thinking. I think that you have a lot of shit to work with. I think you, I think you're obviously a very good looking man with, with, you know, got an insane amount of charisma. You talk very well. I think the only thing that's going to ever get in your way is you. In your way of thinking and instead of you know when you're talking about releasing i acknowledge all this stuff here yeah you acknowledge it but are we just putting a band-aid on it well how can i can you give me pointers to, to work on this you're gonna have to start retraining your mind you've, you've always thought this way you're changing a lifetime of thinking into a in restructuring it into a whole different way be patient and realize what you have to work with because your anxiety i, I mean I, i'm not i'm not saying that i'm picking up huge amounts of anxiety from you but there's a lot of when I, when I try to this is so stupid but when i try to look inside your head you take me down different avenues you're you're very very fast like 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 i'm still talking you you're already thinking of your next question and onto the next thing does that make sense mm-hmm. it's yeah. very it's very lightning fast so when you tell me that you know i absorb all this or i listen to what my therapist said and i'm and i'm you know making these changes here i question that sometimes because with you you're you could be very surface level you don't want to go too far with myself or anyone what both i think even like in relationships i think that uh i, wanna, I don't know come on that's uh, fine. I, I just think like in relationships that it, it has that it has to be difficult for you sometimes because your way of thinking and, and please do not think i'm calling you gay or, or anything negative like that but i think you have a very feminine way of thinking sometimes and it collides with your masculinity what, what do you mean by that like i think that you in relationships have you ever been put placed on a pedestal have you ever been the one to mm, I, I don't think so but i'm open to hearing more i just uh, no, no, i'm not going to shit on this relationship that he's in now but i'm just wondering if again even like in relationships if you're being 100 percent you and kind of owning who you are in it and, and just kind of opening up in a way that truly makes you feel good within instead of instead of feeling like you have to either be on guard or or wonder what that other person's thinking because to, to you it's it, it to me being you is stressful to me because of the overthinking yeah, no, it is hard to be me. I, I do want. But at the be. end of the day, look look at you though. Um, yeah, I mean, I uh, I think there's some nuggets there that could be some truth. I mean, the feminine, masculine, I don't really totally get. I mean, there there. This has to do with love and how you receive love and how you are in relationships. Because with you, again, I'm not saying that I'm not saying that you want to be babied in the relationship, but you you require a lot of attention. Do I? Yeah, to me, to, uh, again, you, well, you, you're the one. You, you tell me. But wh- whether or not, I don't think I do. I don't. I don't. I mean, I'm always when as you say this, I'm thinking and trying to be objective. I mean, do I like attention? Sure. Do I? Uh, I don't. I'm definitely not. I've never been the one in, rela- in any relationship I've ever had that I've asked. I don't. I don't think I've ever asked for more love. Not because, of, and, I, and I've never felt the need to ask for more love. Because in all those relationships, you felt the love. Well, different ways. I mean, other. Th- I mean, all my <laughs> relationships up to this point have ended, right? Mm-hmm. There were reasons why. And as I look back on those relationships, I 
uh, kind of evaluated the love I did receive, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I was someone in, 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 in when I was younger who, you know, you could say the the fixer. And, and by the fixer, I mean, you know, um, you know, almost stubborn. My competitiveness in life would be like, no, you know, I, you know, my parents were these great examples of of a relationship to me, um, at least from what I saw. They were very good at I never saw them fight. I'm mm -hmm. sure they did, but mm -hmm. they were very conscious about that. Um, what that sometimes learned as I was younger is like, you know, the fighting for love. And, you know, you learn from your parents that marriage can be hard and there's good years, bad years, months, whatever. When you're younger and you fall in love for the first time, I took that as like, well, no matter what happens, I'm going to fight for this relationship. And so as I got older, you realize some things are worth fighting for and some things are not. Now, as I look back and reflect on those relationships, I realized some of the love I, didn't, I actually wasn't receiving in the moment in those relationships. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't think about it. And I wasn't, you know, I didn't get that at the time. I look back now and now as I go in and look for new relationships, I try to look for those things I, I, I wasn't getting. Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense. Yeah. So. But are you allowing yourself the opportunity to receive that love, though, like this current relationship? I mean, I don't know if you want to touch it, but well, we could touch it. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't be happier. Um, mm -hmm. It's a relatively new. It's different. You know, we we've known each other. Uh, you know, I mentioned this already, but we we were hanging out for almost a year before we were like, let's be in a committed relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it was it, we were never just friends. Mm -hmm. Right. It was always romantic. But uh, and when I, without question, when it comes to my love life, I very much have my walls up uh, both personally is like someone who's had other relationships that didn't work out. And now from a public standpoint, I'm just very guarded about talking about my relationship, you know, publicly. I am protective of the people I'm in relationships with. Mm -hmm. um, I am protective of myself. I, I don't think uh, any re public relationship. Um, I, I don't think there's anything that you can be gained from having a public relationship. I think you can survive it. I think you can work with it, mm -hmm. but I personally don't feel like, it's going to do anything about good, any good for the relationship. And so I'm very guarded about that. I think about that. And I don't know if I'm right or wrong, but that's just how I think. It's just a lot of shit to think about. Though. I do. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of kind of like putting instead of like, I mean, do you understand where I'm coming from as far as like being free and being able to flow as freely as you possibly can without hindering yourself? It's like you, you over you like you're always thinking about. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. It's, it's exhausting. Yeah. And quite frankly, but I, do you I, see I, really? Fa I, I don't mean to cut you off, but do you see what we see when we look at you? Uh, not not with the not with the the the, the beauty of Nick and, and what it and, and the, the beautiful the things that annoy me. people about me. Yeah, like like <laughs> just no, just like no, like like you like how what we see in you, like as far as like you know again you're 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 already you already got a seat at the table. You've already put your spot in. It's a, this year is going to teach you again. I don't want to get too far into it, but this year is going to be all about what I what what I bring to the table for my career. There's going to be a lot of changes when it comes to opportunities that come into play. But also the most important thing is what's going on on the inside on how Nick is receiving love, with without without the excuses and without the overthinking here. Getting to the core of who you are. You've got a good two years of that coming up. Well, that, that's and good. it doesn't have to it, it's not negative i just feel i feel like this is going to be the most freeing time for i you. didn't see that uh, yeah, I, yeah. Didn't, I didn't feel it as negative yeah um i yeah i don't know receiving love um you know I, again i think I'm, I'm just actively thinking about my current relationship and yeah i i really love the the affection i am receiving in that relationship mm -hmm. i uh we're very communicative uh mm -hmm. we don't uh and uh we, we talk about our feelings with each other. So I don't know if I could be more into receiving. Uh, How does it feel? It feels great. Yeah. I'm, I'm super happy. Mm -hmm. um, at, do I, the overthinking thinker in me, well, uh, I'm very, well, because I feel happy, because mm -hmm. it's so good, mm -hmm. and because I've felt happy in the past and have it not work out, I my overthinking will try to get ahead of potential pitfalls and problems, mm -hmm. which I already know can be annoying to the person I'm in a relationship mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I, I don't need a psychic to tell me that, <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, I, I am aware of that. And that's something I, I do try to work on. Um, and there is a, for me, a, a trying to find the balance of what is helpful and what can be detrimental 
Is it, you know, it makes yeah. Like when you tell me that you're going to a therapist and all this stuff, and that you know you, that you're that you're trying to do the self work within here, and and that's all great. That's all that's all fine and dandy here. But you come from a place of practicality and logic. It's not necessarily about how you feel. It's how you think most of the time. Does that make sense? So with you, so with you, it's it's working on again. I'm not trying to turn you into an emotional person or say that you have to be more in tune with your feelings or go within and all that shit. You're pretty much within all the time. So with you, it's all about allowing yourself the opportunity to flow. F- again, I know it sounds gay, but to flow freely and not hold yourself back and catch yourself when you're overthinking. Handle what's within your control and everything outside. Leave it alone. You know, it, it, it's it, you, you, it's it's a constant. I mean, it's a constant struggle. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, it it, it is. Oh, I was thinking about something, obviously, yeah. uh, that I wanted to <laughs> ask you. Um, oh, one thing I hear all the time that I actually, as someone who tries to be self-aware, sometimes I'm surprised when I hear it. Because on, on one side, you know, is even if there's the host of this podcast, I can be direct, brutally honest. Uh, I will tell people how I feel, you mm-hmm. know, in, in, in situations where a lot of people sometimes don't and. And be like, oh, you're just so direct. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I mean, I, I think so, too. And then on the flip side, uh, in in person, uh, even in relationships with people who I'm, I feel like I'm the closest with, will mm-hmm. often say, I'm hard to read. They don't know what I'm thinking or that I sometimes lack emotion. I think you intimidate them. I've Yes, I hear that. I think that you intimidate them. And I, I'm not going to lie. I was a little intimidated coming in here. I was like, why? Oh, well, because I watched a couple of your clips. I, wa- I watched the one with the with the football player, the astrologer. I didn't Rick see Lewis. anything negative with it. I was like, whatever. People are like, you know, oh, be careful because of, you know, X, Y, and Z or blah, blah, blah. And, you know, and then, you know, Christy was saying that, you know, people didn't want to come on the show because they didn't want to be challenged or whatever. I, th- I, I can get that. But when you sit down and you talk to you, then I see you're going to slap me in the mouth for saying this. But then I see the insecurity. I see, well, I, see the, I see the, I see the, 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 what goes on behind the scenes. And I don't think there's, I, again, it, it, it's not going to, it's not going to make me think that, oh, you're a miserable person or, you know, or that you're a liar or anything like that. I just think that again, with you, it's allow, I'm going to say this over and over again. It's allowing yourself the opportunity to flow as freely as you can without overthinking it or hindering yourself. Because again, with you, it's a lot of, it's a lot of mental. I, I wonder like how you sleep at night sometimes. Pretty Do good you, lately. Yeah. Smoke weed. Oh, pff, well, thanks know. to that Helix sleep mattress. Yeah. Also, thank you, Helix <laughs> sleep. Uh, I'm a size sleeper. Oh my god. So you smoke weed? Uh yes. I I've uh, in, I I don't drink all that much. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I have an indulgence, it's it's weed, uh, mm-hmm. and that's something that I've only gotten into in the past few years. Okay. Um. Yeah. And I I don't feel like I I I sleep fine without it. Mm-hmm. Um. I do enjoy. You know, at, at the end of the day, uh, having just a, a tad, a micro dose, as they say. Oh, yeah. Um, I always smoke after my sessions. And uh, I find that to be helpful for myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't. Uh, yeah. And that for me is a, what do they say? A vice. Uh, not a vice, but more of a, re- I guess, a release. If, is it a re- I think uh, that's good for you because it, it lowers your it lowers your yeah. mental down. It allows you to kind of be silly. It, lo- it yeah. allows me to calm down, yeah. be silly, get out of my own head. Yeah. Uh, and that's been very helpful with, with that. Have you tried writing on it? I have. And how yeah. does it feel? Pretty good. Yeah. yeah. But like I, I don't like using it during the day. And I have a hard time wanting to be productive at night because there's that balance of, using it to unwind, get out of my thoughts, get out of my head, mm-hmm. try to be present. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then if I'm writing, then I'm work and then there's this mental thing that I'm working and that's a lot of thinking though. Like 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 just sitting here, it's a lot of thinking on your end. And people can say, well people think all the time. Yeah, but yours is so loud though. That that makes sense. Yeah. I sometimes am unaware of how loud my thinking is to others. Mm-hmm. I can like see my eyes going like this. Mm-hmm. the wheels turning and all. yeah 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 but yeah. again like with, with like being able to sleep you say you sleep fine or whatever again i know that you were mentioning grinding your teeth and stuff i to grind me, my teeth yeah. yeah to me to me with you again all that built up energy i always tell people it, it's it's like your body's so tight from all this energy that you're storing in and i'm not one of those energy or aura readers or whatever it's just what i pick up on the body that's why i asked about your digestion because with you you can cause yourself like like issues with your stomach or you know just kind of feeling like there's a little bit of a lag with you because you're carrying all this energy and not releasing it to to its entirety or letting it go and people are asking people ask well how do you let that go it's every night I, I do a release and my way of releasing is just you know letting go of the readings that I did disconnecting somebody told me a long time ago um, it was a Reiki healer I don't know if you believe in Reiki but they said I don't of, I don't know what it is 
it's like energy work people coming and massaging you and putting crystals all over you and shit um there, this, this one lady said you've got all these attachments on you you need to start uh, cutting these attachments and letting things go do it every night start releasing get rid of your clients get rid of the energy that you have and get back to you so i'm going to tell you to start centering yourself because you're going to be busy over the next couple of years i mean longer than that but the next couple of years are going to be uh, are going to be a lot a lot personal a lot more personal and a lot more having to do with work with different opportunities that i feel is going to pull you out of your comfort zone right that sounds exciting yeah <laughs> but the thing is to get him to not to over fucking think it though it's a challenge i uh, uh -huh. it, is, it is a challenge yeah i mean it's weird i uh when i was younger i never thought i would lose my mind i don't i don't know if this is common for people as they get older but now as i get older i'm just like i could i could see it does that make sense what a shame for somebody like you to get alzheimer's or something you yeah. know that's so always on point with their way of thinking but i, I would be very surprised if that happened to you doesn't run in my family thank god yeah. knock on wood but uh -huh. um yeah, no, there's just like this, because I am in my head, there's this thought of like, I just, some, it, it is, it's just like, it's uh, the best way I can describe it, feels like a tornado in my head, and then I just have to try to like, take a breath, I mean, I just, sometimes I'll pull in the driveway, and I'll just sit there, and breathe, and put my head in the steering wheel, and I'm actually seemingly having a pretty good day, mm -hmm. I don't even know why I'm fucked up in the head, I'm just like, oh, God, I'm exhausted. I don't think that you give yourself enough personal credit. I think that even if something was to come uh, out of left field for you, that, that what I like about you is the power of your mouth. Like you, you can talk yourself out of it, talk yourself into shit and out of stuff here. So I think with you, you're not giving yourself again. I don't, I don't want to tell you who you are, but you don't give yourself enough credit, or you don't stop to think about all the positive things that make you you. Yeah, you know that seems. I mean, somewhat f fair. I I have a hot. I, I have a hard time accepting compliments. Really? You don't believe that? No. Not for one fucking second. <laughs> it makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> you know what it is sometimes? I think most of my life I've been accused of being cocky. I think that's a defense mechanism. That, well, and, and I, but like when I still get complimented, I, I question people's sincerity. See all that overthinking? Like you can't. That's just... why I get uncomfortable. I don't know if you mean it. I brought you flowers and chocolate-covered strawberries. I'm always and looking I at the it angle. And I meant it. I was like, I'm always looking at the angle. What? 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 What, what would I have to get from you? <laughs> I actually a wasn't date? thinking yeah, about that. But um, <laughs> no, that was a really nice gesture. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm not. I'm not that bad. And I there's. I mean, the person I am, uh, am dating. I mean, one of the things I, I love about her most is how. Um, present she can be and mm -hmm. how thoughtful she is and i it's it's just easier for her for her to, so because i'm an overthinker mm -hmm. i have a hard i can be a more thoughtful person to others because mm -hmm. i'm too busy thinking about myself i saw one picture of her on your instagram it was when she's sitting on the couch yeah i mean that's I, like it's it's new she's got to be careful with absorbing too much of your energy and not taking on and allowing it to take a toll on her because she's she's a, I'm not going to call her an energy vampire or anything like that, but she can she she doesn't she she can latch on too much sometimes and it could take a toll on her. Hmm. Are we going to make it? Well, that's up to you. <laughs> what did your gut tell you? That like that face, that face was. Uh, Chrissy, can you help me, please? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, you do. Uh, I think it's a good experience for. Her. I think that you're going to. I'm not. I'm, again, I'm not. I'm not going to predict that. I don't. I don't want to go. That's the same thing. Why I, won't, why I won't discuss death with people. But I think that it's a good thing Wait, for you. You told Stasi Schroeder that. Fuck. Uh, that her fia that that yeah. Uh oh, I'm concerned. I'm just worried about you. Okay. I'm worried about your way of thinking and you. So it's not an us problem. It's a me problem. It's not, no, I'm not going to put it all on you, too, because she's got issues. I, I, I wonder, does she speak up? Yeah. I mean, when we first started dating, she's a more quiet person. Uh -huh. She is uh, um, someone who, again, she's... Quiet scares me because it's what they don't say. Oh, but she is, as we are, a relationship evolves. Uh -huh. She's clear, like, she's finding her voice. And, like, I couldn't date someone I don't respect. I couldn't date someone whose opinion I don't value. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't date someone who I can't ask questions about, and I couldn't date someone who doesn't have a voice. Mm -hmm. um, I've learned to value the difference between being loud 
and quiet versus having a voice and not. Mm-hmm. I've dated other people. I've said this a lot that were loud, that were big personalities. Mm-hmm. Uh, they certainly spoke. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't necess- It didn't work well. It was. I found it to be hurtful sometimes, or just maybe there's a lack of compatibility. Mm-hmm. And I, I have found to appreciate and value people who, when they do say something, um, it's it's more about the what it's behind it if, if it's meaningful regardless of how loud they are how often they speak mm-hmm. um you know i think again I, like I'm, I'm gonna be positive about it again nothing negative to say about the relationship but i think with her and with you i think it's a good learning experience a, gr- a good growing opportunity for you because again with her with her she seems again uh, I, she doesn't strike me as a loud type of person she just strikes me as somebody that that in, i'm not gonna she doesn't internalize the way that you internalize does that make sense? She's a little bit more, um, I'd say a little bit more sensitive, a little bit more, um, I, I don't know, I, I want to call her intuitive. Yeah, well, I'll, I think that was what would be all fair assessment. And so when it comes to you, I think I think that I think that w- with her, that she can, uh, you, if you allow yourself the opportunity to let go in it and not to overthink it, it's going to be a really good relationship for the both of you because you can bring to the table what she's lacking for her, you, you, you know, with finding her voice and you know, realizing who you are and she can, she can you know, bring that that love because the, the reason why i brought the roses and i brought the strawberries was again how do you how is nick receiving love do those sh- strawberries have chocolate on them yeah white chocolate and regular chocolate because she asked for she tweeted something about wanting flowers and chocolate covered strawberries you fucker you're gonna take my idea and give it to her no she she already, i've already known this <laughs> but uh, can i just get, where'd you get the chocolate strawberries bro i got him from uh what was it bristol farms okay yeah all right yeah noted <laughs> anyway. um yeah i mean uh, I no i'm just kidding <laughs> what go ahead it's te- my turn te- 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 yeah text me. her right text her right now and tell her those fun- those <laughs> came from chris medita so he doesn't take credit for it i'm just kidding, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. um are you worried that you low-key suggested that we're not going to work out because now i'm going to worry about it that's why I didn't want to. Uh, why I didn't want to go there? <laughs> Stop worrying about it. L- I'm worry. not really worried about it. Um, I do have a question for you though, really yeah. fast. You, you say that you're going to a therapist. How does that work, especially mean? with somebody like you? Because you, you're a. Great I mean, it's relatively new. I, I felt like it was. It started in quarantine, and I my anxiety was getting to a place. I've, you know, on this podcast, openly talk about how I support mental health and. And I think if you want, you know, if you feel the need, you should go there. And I just internally felt like I want to do this, you know, mm-hmm. and there's some, you know, I'm in my head a lot and I, I want to try to channel my energy better. And so I, I, that's, that's why, and I did, and it's been helpful. I don't know. The reason why is because and it's over Zoom. If I mean, like how I. Oh, do really? It. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're so perceptive of people and like a good judge of character. Like when you read people, I'd I'd find it weird. I always tell some of my clients is that that have the same energy as you. I don't know how that would work. Again, not telling you that you shouldn't do it. It's because you'd be reading her more than she'd be reading you. Yeah, I, I've thought about that. Mm-hmm. Where I mean, like my ego, like <laughs> this is terrible. I want to be the most interesting client she has. How narcissistic is that? Um, terrible. Um, it's but that's so on brand. That's a, such it's a so thought. <laughs> like, no, really. Am I like, do I challenge you? Like, it's so, <laughs> it's so terrible. Um, but uh, I, she's great. I mean, I, I, but I, there's a respect I have for her. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was referred to me by a friend. Um, I, I reserve the right personally to go in there and be like, this person sucks yeah. and, and move on. Mm-hmm. I've quite enjoyed her. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what she does to have gained my respect, but she has it. And um, I, I find it to be beneficial. Um, there, we, you know, part, I, of, I, part of what you do, I, I'm gonna have to, I have to cut you off. Part of what's going to come into play over the next couple of years is going to be, it has, it's not going to be all about the therapy and what's going on with you, but these, but these, the clarity and the insight that you get from, again, people like me, people like your therapist here and coming up with your own conclusion. Cause I feel like what's going to end up happening with you is that you're not going to go down a completely different path into something di- completely different, but I feel like you're still, I'm saying too much, but I feel like your story, what's going to end up happening over the next, I'm going to say the rest of this year leading into 2022 into 2023 is going to be, is going to be different. It's going to be more of kind of like a, I don't want to say a different version of you. I'm going to say more of a in tuned version of who you are, knowing where you're at in this space and time and then sharing your experiences about it. 
Well, I, I have a hard time wanting to share my experiences about things. But it's not like we're going to sit in front of a campfire and be like, oh, my God, this is what happened yeah. here. You're going to do it in a way that's, that, that, that's you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Um, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, so on brand. What, what do you mean? Oh, I d- I've never asked my therapist for advice. I don't know if that's good or bad, but I'm not interested in her advice. I'm just interested in, you know, talking to her. <laughs> so what, what, do you guys that talk of, what do you guys talk about? How I'm feeling? Yeah, isn't that I, like the whole point of therapy? Oh, yeah. I, I, is it? I'm pretty sure therapists aren't supposed to give their advice. They're supposed to help you guide you in a way to help you make the best decisions for yourself. Is she guiding you in that way or are you telling her where you want to go and she's making sure that it's okay? I honestly don't know, but <laughs> it seems to help with my anxiety. I do know that much, and I don't feel like uh, she has dictated uh, my my decisions. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel good about the decisions I've made mm-hmm. and that they are mine. I, def- I am someone that if I don't feel like the decision was mine, I, I have a hard time living with that decision. I feel like I I need to personally own my decisions, and if I don't, I feel dirty. Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense. I think that, again, I'm going to throw it back in your face that you overthink things. I think that you're a lot better off than you give yourself credit for, and it's time to start thinking that way. It's time. I'm not saying that you're not doing anything with your career, not putting one foot in front of the other, but you have all the fucking tools that you need to work with. You know this. What ends up happening to you? Well, one thing, I, I, I don't know how to enjoy things. Like, I have a hard time enjoying anything. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense because you overthink it. Yeah. <laughs> that, that That's the huge thing. He, but he know it's not like Except we're talking. roller skating. I you saw don't yeah. roller skates. I truly just too. enjoy that. Yeah. You just enjoy that and you don't overthink it. Yeah. I need to get my roller skates again so we can go roller skating. But again, he knows all this. He knows what's going on with him. He knows what his issue is. He knows what he needs to be doing. What's next? Stop using the excuse that, you know, that, that you overthink. You can't use that anymore. Well, I, I don't. This God's honest truth. Everyone loves to tell me I overthink. I, uh, I've recently started just to acknowledge and accept that that's probably true because it always used to bug me even a few, even a few years ago, um, that uh, I didn't. I was like, "What do you mean? I don't overthink. I, I think you know when you tell an overthinking a thinker that they think they're just like, I'm just." I'm thinking how, you know, like it's all relative. The mm-hmm. way I think seems mm-hmm. normal. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden I had other people tell me I overthink. And I'm like, no, no, that's just called thinking. That's like using my head. Now, as I've gotten older, I'm like, you know, maybe some people, like, uh, you know, enough of people tell you something. You're like, I should probably listen. But how, how self-aware of you, are you of yourself? Like, I remember I told you, you don't see what we see. You know, you're, you're obviously, you're, you're, you're being Nick all day. You know, you're looking out of your own eyes. You don't take time to see how you come across to other people. And again, I think other people have an issue with your overthinking because they're like, if, the, if we can just get rid of that one thing, look how far this guy is going to go. Yeah, but I, am I aware <laughs> like, of it? What? You fucking should be. Well, because what? you can read it on your face. Uh-huh. What like, do you mean? You may not be aware of it, but you can read when you're overthinking your face tells No, it. I know. But am I aware yeah. of that? You're the, yeah. You're, you're the have classic- I become aware of that? <laughs> yes. In the moment, am I good at being present enough to like stop myself in the moment from doing it? I haven't gotten that far yet. You no. know those people that draw <laughs> you as as a cartoon character? They're gonna draw him with like these bubbles above his head, like with all this shit going on here, because it's it's all it's yeah. all overthinking. I know, but I don't want to make that. I don't want to make that the whole thing of, of 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 the the time here. So how can I, before you give Chrissy the satisfaction of of giving her a quick <laughs> reading, um, how can I? take this information and use it to ensure that I uh, bring about the best possible outcomes over the next couple of years for myself. You're going to have to stop thinking about it and start incorporating it in your everyday life. What you're going to have, you're going to have to start, you're going to, instead of speaking about it, you're going to have to start taking action. Your, your actions are going to have to be louder than your words. Mm-hmm. You're going to, you're going to have to retrain your way of thinking into a different way of thinking of not being so, I'm not saying you've got amazing self-control. And I think that's what gets in your way sometimes too, is that self-control stuff. Is that where, is where you were, where again, what causes you to overthink letting yourself again, fl- God flow freely here, not overthink it here. Realize that you're not somebody that's going to go out there um, and make an ass out of yourself on purpose, or that's not going to be taken seriously. I don't, you, you don't come across that way. 
And I think that the overthinking, all it does here is it kind of hinders you and it puts you, puts you a couple steps back when you should be four steps ahead of the game, especially with somebody like your personality and what you bring to the table and all that creativity that you have going on. I feel like you stifle it. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, creativity from a creative standpoint, it's, uh, I mean, it, it's been fun the past few years. It, I certainly, I certainly stifled in my past career when I sold software. I was like, you know, I don't, I don't know how creative I need to be here, but it's been fun to open up that gate again, so mm -hmm. to speak. And I definitely feel like it, whatever change that you speak to or, or growth will come in that area because I feel like I am retapping it in, into that kind of brain and those skills in, in ways that I shut off since maybe high school. But make sure that you are present, though, that you're paying attention mm. to what's going on around you and not just what you're not, not what you're not what you're seeing in front of your face here, because these opportunities are going to come to you in a way where it's going to probably be in passing or or kind of like um, someone's going to drop dimes here that you need to go and pick up. So, again, don't be afraid to think. I'm not saying that you that you're so close minded that you can't think outside the box. Just be a little bit more receptive to what's going on around you with, without without being so much in your head. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. I can. Uh, I am a creature of habit, and I can be close-minded about things that I'm willing to do. Mm -hmm. But I'm definitely more open-minded in other things. I don't know. It's fun. Uh, Chrissy, do you have questions for Chris, or or, or Chris? Do you oh. have questions for Chrissy? I All mean, right, let's go, Chrissy. You can ask me the questions. I don't have any questions. Are you? Why? Because I'm nervous. Don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. Okay, so you don't want me to go in there and read you? Yes. Okay. How, how, oh, sorry. Can I ask a question? Yep. Mm -hmm. How does it matter virtually, Zoom, in person? No. Uh, as long as I can see her. Yeah. Okay. Um, Please continue. Yeah. Uh, I have nothing, again, nothing negative to give you, but there. Um, I, I question your family and your lineage and the issues that happen, the, the, the issue when it comes to the women in your family. Does that make sense? As far as like when it comes to um, mental health. And how not, not saying that everybody's crazy here, but there's a lot of like this, uh, and I hate using these words here, but a lot of karmic energy between the with the women that are in the family. Does that make sense? And I feel like with you, um, uh, first of all, is your mother still around? Uh, the the uh, what yeah. is your mother like in their relationship with your mother? Because with her, with her, in the way that the way that the way that you come in here, I feel like I feel like you are the the reason why the river's going to change its flow in the family. Does that make sense? As far as like yeah. being being, uh, I feel like you've got you've you're, you're crazy intuitive, but I feel like some of that stuff that some of that stuff scares you, especially when you have to look at people that you're close to. Does that make sense? And pick up things on them that you don't that that you that it 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 can it can hurt you or 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 you can be very sensitive about, especially when it comes to your your mother. Does that make sense? Yes. So there's a lot of this. I literally just cried about this last night with AJ, which is freaking me out. So Chrissy has such a idea. psychic boner right now. That's great. <laughs> I do. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I'm. Yeah, my mother and my relationship is is very important. But I can I confirm. A lot of I can confirm. Pressure that, and yeah. guilt. Yeah. With uh, it. But you're you're here for a different reason. What you what you've been placed here to do again. I'm not calling you superwoman or anything like that. Here is to is that you are going to change the way the river flows. And with you, with these lessons here, and with, with with what you have to do in this lifetime here is learn to let go and become your own here. And your mother, the the the, the guilt that you have towards your mother or that energy that comes in here because your mother your your mother's had a very interesting life. Does that make sense? Like to where yeah. I feel like you feel like you're responsible for her sometimes. And I feel like what ends up happening is that your guilt can get the better of you. And so this is all about coming into your own. And, and I, I honestly feel like when it comes to your intuition, that sometimes it's, again, I'm going to go back to saying that it scares you to, to, to pick up on this. And I think that just like with, with, with Nick overthinking, I feel like with you, it can cause like some sort of depression or anxiety. So you have to be really careful with that because again, just like I was talking about his girlfriend being an energy an energy person, you're very much the same way too that you got to be careful who you're around because you're, when I talk about people having demons inside of them, I'm not saying that you're possessed by the devil, but you have that, that dark energy inside of you that sometimes can get the better of you, especially when your mother comes around or there's people that, that are like that, that entice that inside of you and it can make you feel like shit. Duly I noted. <laughs> So, yeah. How do you feel about that? Any questions? <laughs> I literally had this conversation last night and like broke down in tears about like this is this that's kind of crazy. Yeah. I literally I literally had that conversation last night because my father did pass away and I have this like 
overwhelming guilt and overwhelming like like I know like my I feel like my path is to take care of my mother and what do I get to accomplish or have in my own life before girl, that happened girl let me tell you about so family. literally was the conversation I had last night so that's kind of crazy let me tell you about family really quick what sets me apart from other psychics is that I don't um I don't condone that blood is thicker than water or that you have to respect them because it's family. Let's be truthful here. We have people in our family that you and I both know that if we worked with them outside, you know, outside of from being a family, we would never fuck with them in our personal lives. And I feel like what ends up happening to people is they take this, these family values in this identity of like, I have to, that's my mother, that's this or whatever. I have a very similar background as to, as you, and I had to get rid of all that shit. I had to, I, and again, I'm not trying to compare apples to oranges here, but that guilt and that feeling of having to be responsible, how, why would I want to be responsible or take that guilt on my shoulders when this person can fuck up on their own all they want and I have to be yeah. the one to take the brunt of it? It's not worth it. Color me. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chris. You're welcome, love. We can talk. There's other things that I want to talk to you about on personal stuff. Um, we can talk about off air. So if you want to get my email information from Nick, we can do that. All right. Okay. All right. Thanks, All right. Chris. You're welcome, love. Uh, yeah. Chris, this has been a, a pleasure. Before we let you go, yes, uh, we like to play a game with our guests called, ironically, Do You Know Me? Do you know Where me? we get to guess if we know a lot about our guests. Okay. So we will put on our psychic caps and see if we can let me take mine off. return the favor. Oh, before I go, just... What are the percentage chances I'm I'm uh, in a relationship with the same person a year from now? Just what do you what do you give it? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Chris. God, she's gonna hate. Uh, Am I gonna be a dad anytime soon? You would make a great dad. I mean, that's not what I asked. I'm gonna say there's a good. I'm gonna say there's a good percentage. That just feels I like know, you're lying to me. Don't put me on the spot. Uh, well, yeah. So no, I'm not going to be a dad anytime soon. Define soon. Great question. I'm a not lot, trying. Lot, I'm, not, I'm not trying to have a kid right now. A lot's going to change over the next couple of years for you. A lot, a lot, a lot of a lot of uh, breaking breaking the mold, getting out of your comfort zone, realizations and stuff. So, again, I. So, uh, so I'm going to say within I'm going to say within the next three to five years. But probably not with the person I'm in a relationship. God with damn. Now. There, there's there's an 80 percent chance that it's gonna be with her there's your percentage that's it, it sounded like 20 when he said 80 help me out christy I'm don't just, leave me I'm out just, here to, i'm just reading your body language I'm like, bro i'm still stuck on my mom shit yeah. <laughs> oh. christy's, christy's digest, just digesting over there uh, i'm just having this is, i'm just having fun with you this is okay. a lot of fun um all right do you know me with chris you can't use your notes Medina. No, I'm not. Okay. No. This this has nothing to do, but I always like to have my notes in front okay. of me. Question number one. Has Chris ever lived abroad? Has Chris lived what? Has Chris ever lived abroad? I'm gonna say no. Uh, I don't I'm know why. No I have no well. reason, just a gut feeling. He yeah, is one hundred percent right. Okay. Does Chris have a record player? Hmm. Ooh. Does he like the vinyls? I'm gonna say, I do, so I'm going to say yes. Yeah, Chris doesn't strike me as someone who cares too much about being ironic or, you know. Um, he certainly wouldn't do it because it makes him feel cool. No. And I don't know if he's nice. that much of a music lover, so I'm going to say no. He was so close. No, but I am a huge music lover. Oh, you are? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I said too much. Has Chris ever cut his own hair? Ever? What are we talking ever here? Like, he like ev has ever? He, have you ever used his scissors to his hair? Has he like trimmed his? Yes, he's a guy. Every guy's cut their own hair. They, you go, you all have one of those thingamajiggies. Yeah. I don't even know the shavers. Called. Yeah. <laughs> has he ever? Yes, he has. With the clips. Yes. Yes. Of course yes. For sure. Okay. Has Chris ever gone to work high? Yeah. yeah On he, what? I mean, guess anything. <laughs> um, mm, no. Ever. I mean, I guess you could say I have if I've smoked weed to write a book. I've never. I've never done it while going to work for someone else. I've, I've done it while going to work for myself. <laughs> and our my our H policy, our HR policy is, you know, if it makes you more productive, then go nuts. <laughs> Good to know. Now I know uh, the HR policy. 
<laughs> for myself. I mean, I don't know. You know, as long as you're productive, Chrissy. Te- so, I, I, on that sense, I'm gonna say he has to some. Yeah. Yes, I have. I say no. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I win. Has Chris ever quit his job? Yes, we know he sold insurance before. He is now a yes. psychic. That's not even a question. He told us the answer. Uh, right? I mean, just yep. to mm-hmm. confirm. Okay. Does Chris know five cast members from Jersey Shore? Are there less? Are there more than five? I don't know five. I don't. <laughs> I know like three. Um, so I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. But he does like pop culture. Wait, he does really like pop culture. So, okay, I'm still going to say no. No, you're right. Uh-huh. Has Chris ever been in an open relationship? Hmm, interesting. Yeah, we don't, hmm. I don't know. I don't even know if he's in a relationship. I do know he likes rough sex. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. That much <laughs> has been <laughs> verified. Punch, like, like, yeah, today. with the punching. Um, Fine, I'm gonna man, say if you no. want me to choke you, I will. Huh? Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Has he ever been in an open relationship? No, but he's discussed it. Oh. He's good. Uh, I'm a jealous bitch and a possessive bitch, so I would never be in an open <laughs> relationship ever in my life. But have you ever d- had, had a discussion? Yes. Has Chris ever paid <laughs> to have their eyebrows done? Hard yes. Uh, I can't see his eyebrows. Yeah, I'm gonna go with yes too. God, I love you guys. Yes, <laughs> and he said hard yes. I don't know hard whether yes. to be yeah offended by that or. I knew I was right because you sounded offended, and I always <laughs> know when I'm right about someone because when you elicit an emotional response by telling about someone who they are and they and they feel it, you know you nailed it because you get. Because you're like, fuck, I mm-hmm, hate that about, mm-hmm, you know, yeah. like, uh, know that when you really strike uh, a nerve with whoever you're dating. Has uh, Chris ever faked an orgasm? Everyone's done it. I'm going to say yes. I did try to get away with it once. Harder to do as a guy, but I definitely tried. Uh, sure. Chris has faked it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's de- it's definitely harder. It. You're like, how do I, do I just... We could be here all day talking about some yeah. of that stuff, but yeah. <laughs> Last question. Has Chris ever gambled in Vegas? I mean, yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Great. Uh, do you know me with uh, Chris Medina? Chris, this has really been a lot of fun and absolute pre- pleasure. Can you <laughs> tell you. people where they can find you, listen to your podcast, uh, follow you on social, all that fun stuff? Yeah, you can uh, sign up for a reading at chrismedina.guide. There's an option for a half-hour session or an hour-long session, chrismedina.guide. Uh, social media is at psychic, Chris M, at psychic Chris M, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. And my podcast is called In Your Head with Chris Medina. And it's got a big gay pink fluorescent logo on it, so you can't miss it. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, again, I, I really appreciate you coming on and, and being willing to indulge my skepticism and, and questions. And... Uh, uh, certainly uh, goes a long way for, for me not that you care because a lot of your peers are unwilling to do that well, so I appreciate it props thank you. to you <laughs> thank, uh, you. thank you guys for listening uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode don't forget to send in your questions at asknick at castmedia.com cast with a K uh, we would love your five star reviews uh, check out some of our merch that uh, is always being updated at vilefiles.com and if there is nothing else <laughs> we will see you back on Monday have a great you're crazy